Hi friends, how are you today? My name is Lisbeth and I'm not a makeup artist. I am completely self-taught, but I like to, but I do like makeup. I like um, playing with it and making different looks and all that good stuff. And I also like telling stories. So that's what I do. I like to do my makeup while I tell a story. And please excuse my little splotchy face today. I saw a video yesterday and I just wanted to see if it worked, just to see. So this girl, she had some acne, she had quite a bit of acne on her face, but she put concealer on her face first and let it sit for two minutes. And then she put foundation on and did the rest of her makeup routine, routine and you couldn't see the acne. And apparently, and there was a guy who was explaining the video, and apparently it works because the, it, the long, as it sits on your skin, it like goes, it, what is the word I'm looking for? Absorbs into your skin. I don't know if it's going to work on me, but I just wanted to see if it doesn't work. No big deal. But I just wanted to see. Oh, so I also, when I do my stories and whatever I put on my face, I also post down below. So if you're ever curious about my sources or what I use on my face, it's down below in the description. Um, so for today's story, like I was looking around for Halloween stories and I saw this story and it reminded me of childhood. Did any of you guys ever watch Arthur? Arthur the Aardvark when you were kids. It was it was one of my favorite shows. We had like half an hour of TV time. I know, half an hour. Um every day. And when we usually watched Arthur. And I loved it. It was one of my favorite shows. Do they still have it on? I don't even know. But it was it was a good show. I liked it. I thought it was a good show. Yeah, that didn't really do anything for that spot. I didn't think it would, though. But, um, anyway, so... The reason this story brought back to my childhood and Arthur was because the first time he had ever... And I didn't remember this until I actually saw the story. But the first time I ever heard anything about this was on Arthur. And the story I'm going to tell today... Oh, sorry is the story, I really need to do something about the back of that mirror, of Baba Yaga. And for those of you who don't know who Baba Yaga is, Baba Yaga is a witch that is rumored to haunt Eastern Europe. And she lives in a wood hut, and this wood hut is different because it's on giant chicken legs and these chicken legs move around and so she just roams the forest and is said to eat children so this is a story of one girl's uh what's the um Adventure, um, yeah, adventure, or <sighs> um, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, and I keep, sorry, interaction, there we go, interaction with Baba Yaga. So it was in a part of Eastern Europe that gets very cold in the winter. There lived a young girl named Vasilisa. I'm sorry if I say that wrong. Vasilisa, Vasilisa. And Vasilisa lived with... Uh, but yeah, Baba Yaga lives in a, in the, hold on, a little more backstory. Baba Yaga lives in this part of Eastern Europe that gets bitterly cold in the winter in a dark forest. So, back to Vasilisa. Vasilisa. 
there uh, there is a on the edge of this forest where Baba Yaga lives there is a forest I mean there is a town where everyone knows the story of Baba Yaga and to stay out of the forest so she doesn't eat the small children and Sorry. So. Vasilisa was a beautiful girl and she lived with her dad a long time ago in this village. And the girl, her mom had sadly died some years before. And before she died, she gave Vasilisa a wonderful gift. It was a little rag doll, and it was really, it wasn't really remarkable. It was just like, I, it was just like any other rag doll. But she told Vasilisa if she took care of this rag doll and fed it a biscuit and some milk every night, that the doll would protect her. Or the doll would always be ready to help her. And so Vasilisa did this every night. Every night she would feed her, do her doll a biscuit and a glass of milk. And the doll would eat the biscuit and drink the milk, smile at Vasilisa, and go back to sleep. Now, as time went by, the girl's father decided to marry again. And his second wife had two daughters of her own. And, but neither of them could touch Vasilisa in, look, in regards to her beauty or sweetness of character. In fact, they were jealous of Vasilisa and hated her terribly. And they would often plot that when, uh, well, about what they would do when her father left home. But as long as he was home, they had to pretend like they liked her. But they would often whisper in her ear, just wait until your father is not home. And the stepmother hated her as well, sadly. And when Vasilisa had recently passed her 16th birthday, her father said that he had to go away on a journey that would last a month. Vasilisa begged him to begged him to take her with him, but he just laughed and said that he was going on business and she would be bored. So, so he didn't take her, but. The first night after he had left, the stepmother gathered all three girls together and said she had some tasks for them. She told uh, Tanya, the oldest, to go in her room, fetch a button, and sew it on her red dress. She told Katya, Katya, who was the youngest, to go and in the to the kitchen table and roll some pastry so that it's nice and flat. And she told Vasilisa that she needed to go into the forest to go to Baba Yaga's house in the forest and ask her to lend them and ask her to lend them some lights. So and she said, now run along, dear. We don't want you to get lost in the dark now, do we? And so she shooed her out of the house so fast that she barely had time to put on her shoes. Or on her hat and gloves. So Vasilisa walked 
forlornly to the center of the street and took the little out doll out of her coat pocket where it had been sleeping. And she said to this little doll, that oh little doll my mother told me that if I fed you and looked after you that you would help me when I needed help and well I well I fed and looked after you and I'm in terrible trouble I have to go to Baba Yaga and every known that and everyone knows that she is dreadfully wicked. Please help me. What am I to do? The little doll looked up at Vasilisa and said, Be as brave as you are beautiful. Go to Baba Yaga's hut and no harm will be and no harm will come to you. So Vasilisa mustered all her courage and walked down the path. And I'm feeling the purple today, guys. But so she walked down the path toward Baba Yaga's hut. And as she was walking, she, she heard the sound of hooves coming up behind her. And so she stepped out of the way and let a rider wearing a blazing red coat, cloak go past her. And then she kept walking and a little while later, she heard hooves again. So she stepped out of the way again. And this time she saw a rider in, a daz in dazzling white speed past her. And some time later, a third horse shot by and his rider wore a cloak as dark as midnight. And she wondered who these, who these riders were, but she kept walking. And after about an hour of walking, she came upon a She came upon a clearing and in this clearing she saw she had no trouble seeing and even though it was quite dark she had no trouble seeing because the clearing was lit by skulls that were lighted and or lit um so she goes into this clearing and sees a fence and beyond this fence she sees a strange hut that had chicken legs so she knew that she had found baba yaga's hut and as she so she went up to the and as she walked towards the hut she realized that the hut had turned so that it was looking at her and then the hut began to lower itself until it was closer to the ground and then the door opened and Baba Yaga's nose was so bony and so long that it preceded her out the door and then after she had and then Sorry, I make weird noises with my mouth. And then she saw Baba Yaga, and she was a tall, thin uh, witch who was holding a broomstick. Or she was a tall, thin woman who was holding a broomstick. And... She came towards her, but she didn't walk. No, her feet floated above the ground. 
Well, child, she said, did the cat get your tongue or are you just badly brought up? Speak, child, spit out your name and your business here. I haven't got all night to hover around while you tremble and while you tremble and gibber like an idiot. For a few minutes, Vasilisa's lips quivered so much that that no proper words were come out of her mouth. Just ah, uh, ah. Uh. And then she remembered the doll's words that no harm would come to her. And so she said, good ma'am. I, it is only me, little Vasilisa. My stepmother sent me to borrow, to the forest to borrow light from Baba Yaga. And did she now, said Baba Yaga thoughtfully well i am baba yaga but you may call me babushka and vasilisa brightened a little bit at this because babushka was another word for grandmother and baba yaga went on to say now come into my hut i will give you some simple tasks and if you are not lazy and work well and complete your work like a good girl, I will give you the light to take back to your stepmother and let you go free. But if you are lazy and do not complete the work, I will eat you. So, ha <laughs> ha she cackled, how do you like that for an offer? And To tell you the truth, Vasilisa did not like that at all, but she, but she had faith that all would be well and that she could complete the tasks. So she agreed with Baba, she agreed to Baba Yaga's terms and they began going walking and she followed the old lady as she floated back to the her house and as she got close she called out locks unlock and the locks unlocked and let them into the house and creaked shut again behind Vasilisa as she stepped into the house and she And then she fit, she saw that most of the room was taken up by a huge oven, which she was very nervous about, understandably. And as she went, and then she felt the house rise and the chicken legs started to move the hut. And she realized there would be no escape unless Baba Yaga let her go. Baba Yaga sat down at the supper table and said, fetch me my supper, dear. Yes, Babushka, replied Vasilisa, and she brought over some bread and cheese for the old lady. Ah, oh, well, said Baba Yaga. Soon I shall be eating a nice plate of roast meat with the thinly sliced and pink in the middle. With those words, she pinched Vasilisa's arm. Now tomorrow, my dear, you must complete my little task. While I'm away from the hut, you must tidy the yard, clean the hut, and cook pumpkin soup for my supper. Can you do this? Why, yes, Babushka, I can said Vasilisa, who was relieved that the task did not count by any means beyond her ability, her beyond her abilities. That is good, said Babiaga, and when you have finished doing that, you can sort out all the kitchen pots and pans. 
So Baba Yaga ate her bread and cheese and drank a tankard of frothy brown ale be before falling asleep on on top of a thick fur which was strewn above the stove, which was the warmest place in the hut. The hut continued to move around and Vasilisa felt like, and Vasilisa felt queasy. She certainly had no appetite herself. But before she lay down for the night, she before she lay down for the night, she did scrounge a few crumbs for her doll and fed her some drops of milk. When the rag doll had finished her supper, Vasilisa asked her, Oh dear, what have I done? How shall I ever get out of here? The rag doll replied, have courage and faith and all will be well. For Baba Yaga is unable to tell a lie and she is bound to keep her promise. The next morning, Baba Yaga arose from her bed on top of the stove and drank another tankard of Yael and... Drink another tankard of Yael before flying up the chimney onto the roof. And as Vasilisa looked out the window, she saw Baba Yaga flying away, but she wasn't in a broom this time. She was in a pestle. Now, for those of you, wait, just kidding. She was riding a giant mortar. And for those of you who don't know, um, mortar and pestle is something that it's, um, the mortar is the bowl and the pestle is what you use, but you could use it to like crush her herbs and stuff. But she was flying in the mortar and she was using the pestle as an oar to guide her way through the sky. And like that, this disembodied southern voice has several of them. This is, that's the pestle and the, that's the mortar. This is not a sponsored video. We'd very much like it to be. We'd be very grateful if it was. But this is not a sponsored video. Thank you. Um, so Vasilisa looked out the window until the witch had disappeared from sight. And she, and then she started to clean and cook. She got everything spick and span. And she, and then she, And the soup on the cooker for delay. But now she faced a dilemma. How could she possibly sort out all the black peas from the white peas? There must have been thousands. And when she heard a noise outside the hut, oh, Baba Yaga must be back early, she thought. Now I'm done for. But when she looked out the window, it was the white horseman who, who had overtaken her on her way. And she, and he galloped around the fence of the compound and then was off again into the woods. And when Vasilisa looked, all the black peas had been separated from the white peas. Her task was done. That evening, Baba Yaga came back and when she saw that all the tasks were done, she couldn't, she couldn't manage to hide her surprise at all that her guest had managed to complete them. 
And so she said, I see that you are a good little worker, my dear. But, and, well, in that case, tomorrow you can make pea soup and fetch water from, and fetch water from the stream to fill up the tank. Here, use this bucket. What she handed to Vasilisa was not a bucket, but it was a seat. And Vasilisa wondered how she would ever manage to use the sieve to fetch the water because it was an impossible task and she despaired. But still that night, the rag doll urged her not to feel despair that all would be okay. And she knew in her heart that something wonderful might happen. So she, the next day as she went to the stream to feel the water, she saw the red horseman, she went to the well and the red horseman rode by and he took the sieve from her hand and hurled it in through the open window. When Vasilisa went back to the hut, she found that the tank had been filled. Well, that evening, Baba Yaga came back and she dipped her finger into the tank and tasted the fresh water. And she said, indeed, you are a hardworking girl. Clever, too. She said, let's see if you... So let's see if you, or she said, you are a hardworking girl. Let's see if you are clever too. And she told Vasilisa that she needed to stay up all night and count all the stars in the heavens. And she had to know the exact number of stars and how many and she couldn't be wrong by one or two. She couldn't even be wrong by one more or less or else Vasilisa would eat her. And so that night, and if she got all the, if she got the answers right, then she would be able to take her light and go free. So that night, she gazed out the window at the sky and tried to scout, count the stars. One, two, three, five. But by the time she reached 100 stars, she was no longer sure what star, where she was or what star she had or had not counted. So this just seemed like an impossible task. And she started to... And the hut had all, was always still moving. It kept moving around and changing spots. So that did not help her at all. And she eventually she began to sob and said, Oh, dear little doll, who will come to the aid of poor little Vasilisa this time? I cannot guess the number of stars in the sky. And in the morning, the, worry, the witch shall surely eat me. Do not worry, said the little doll. Have courage and keep faith and all will be well. 
So, and it was, right? The midnight hour, the rider in the midnight black cloak came riding up to Vasilisa and whispered a number in her ear. Now, I can't tell you this number because it was a secret because it's a secret but it was the exact number of stars in the sky and in the morning when baba yaga woke uh vasilisa said good morning babushka shall i tell you the number of stars in the sky now and baba yaga said Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Yes, go ahead and tell me. But you better not be wrong, for if you are, I shall eat you. Vasilisa told the number to Baba Yaga, who let out a, out a terrible cry, like, ha! Ah! And, I don't know. Sorry. And her eyes blazed like those of the skulls surrounding her hut. Who told you that? She demanded. And she demanded. And she picked up a plate and threw it across the hut so it smashed against the wall and then she picked up a knife and Vasilisa was sure she meant to kill her but babushka she said you promised that if i told you the number correctly you would let me go free and i could take a light Baba Yaga Baba Yaga froze for a second and her fierce glare lessened somewhat. Ah yes, she said more calmly. So I did. I suppose it was morning, day and night that helped you with the other tasks I set you. Vasilisa nodded. For she now understood that that's who the three horsemen had been, morning, day, and night. Then you are a good girl, said Bo Baba Yaga. For if morning, day, and night chose to help you, that means your spirit is in harmony with the universe. I will do you no harm. Wait here while I go on my business. I have no tasks for you today. Tonight you shall return home with the light. So that, so Baba Yaga left to do her flying around, whatever she did. And when she returned that night, she... Uh, gave, she handed a skull light to Vasilisa and told her that it would light up her stepmother and sisters well enough. And, all right, hold on guys, I'm going to go finish my lips and then I'll be back to finish it. So Baba Yaga gave Vasilisa a school light and told her to take it home and it would light up her stepmother and her two sister stepsisters very well. Well, so Vasilisa took the school and returned back to her home. And she expected that her stepmother would have found a light by now. But in fact, the house was not lit. Instead, her stepmother and two sisters were sitting in complete darkness. 
Now, Vasilis has stepped into the house and the school lit up the inside bright as day. I'm home, she called out, but received no reply. For as soon as the light fell upon her stepmother and stepsisters, they turned to dust. Vasilisa went to live with a kindly old lady in the village until her father returned from his business. When he came back, he thought that his wife and stepdaughters must have run away. He did not miss them much. He lived happily with his beautiful daughter, Vasilisa, until one day a prince came riding by and caught sight of her. She was the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. And we had no hesitation in asking her to marry him, which she did, and they lived happily ever after. I th so that is the story of Baba Yaga and Vasilisa. And just how she was able to handle all those tasks. And with the stepmother and sisters, well, they probably got what was coming to them. So for my lips today, I just decided to kind of do a fun light slash darker purple. I don't know if you can see, I'll zoom in a little. Sorry about that. So for my lips, I just decided to do a fun kind of light slash darker purple look. And I'm liking this look. It's fairly nondescript, but serviceable. And hold on just a sec. Those lines are too... You, um, what's that I'm looking for? You can see the lines too much. Let's see if I can even out a little bit. Yeah, that looks so far. I'll take it. Anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed listening to the story and see me do this look one or both or, you know, um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Please remember to like and subscribe. And please remember to always treat people with respect and kindness. Everyone has a story. We don't know what it is. It's a little respect, kindness, love, compassion, happiness. Makes the world a better place. So I will see you next time. Bye.